Today we will be highlighting the salient points of the history and examination of the knee with the help of a patient. Hello Angel. Hi Doctor. How are you doing today? I'm alright thanks, but I still have some pain in my knee. Oh I'm sorry to hear that. Have a seat and we can talk more. Information elicited on history such as mechanism of injury, history of trauma, as well as whether this is the first episode or if there is a history of recurrence will guide the examination. Symptoms include pain. This may be real or referred. Referred pain commonly originates from the hip or the spine. Absence of other symptoms, as well as negative findings on examination, differentiate real from referred pain. Localized pain would be indicative of pathology of the underlying structures, and revision of the anatomy is vital. Swelling may be caused by fluid which can either be blood, which causes swelling in hours, synovial fluid or transudate, which causes swelling in days, or pus, which may be associated with the history of trauma and associated systemic symptoms. Swelling may also be caused by soft tissue, hard tissue, gas, or a foreign body. Patients may complain of knee instability, which they would describe as giving way of the knee. Locking, which would manifest as an inability to extend the knee. Intraarticular noises may be heard, such as a pop, click, clunk, or crepitus, which may be hard or soft. And lastly, patients may complain of deformity. As with all orthopedic examinations, the general principle is to look, feel, and move. Ensure that the entire area of examination is exposed. Remember to assess neurovascular status and examine the joint above and below, in this case, a hip and ankle screen. Examination begins as the patient walks in with evaluation of gait. While standing, observe the posture of the leg and assess alignment in various views. So in the AP view, the leg is in anatomical vulgus. Note the quadriceps angle and any subluxation, dislocation, or deformity. In the lateral view, assess if the knee is able to extend fully or if there is a fixed flexion deformity. Again, note any subluxation, dislocation, or deformity. Posteriorly, look for swellings or scars. With the patient on the examination bed, assess for rotational alignment. The feet should lie in 20 to 40 degrees of external rotation. Also note any wounds, bruising, muscle wasting, and any leg length discrepancy. Tenderness is assessed by firstly asking the patient to pinpoint the area of maximal pain. If possible, flex the knee to 90 degrees to open up the joint space and palpate along the joint line for any tenderness. Proceed to palpate the bony contours, ligaments, tendons, and their attachments for any tenderness. Swelling may be either localized or generalized. Generalized swelling would be indicative of fluid. Assess and quantify fluid by performing a patella tap, which will indicate a large amount of fluid. A small to moderate amount of fluid may be detected by the wipe and cross fluctuation tests. A patella lift test will not be possible if there is synovitis. Muscles can be evaluated by ensuring intact flexor and extensor mechanisms. Palpate for any gap in the quadriceps muscle, patella or patella tendon. Muscle wasting can be objectively evaluated by measuring the girth of the thigh muscles 15 cm above the patella or tibial tubercles. Assess the patellofemoral joint for retropatellar tenderness by pushing the patella to either side and feeling the femoral condyles as well as below the patella. Consider aspiration if the knee is very swollen, as this and pain may limit movement. 
Give analgesia or consider examining under anesthesia if pain is unbearable. And always remember to compare both sides. Assess both active and passive range of motion. Place the flat of your hand over the knee uh, to feel for any crevices. Normal active flexion is between 0 and 135 degrees. To assess have some extension, stabilize the thigh, and lift the heel of the bed. In normal passive flexion, the heel should be able to reach the bottom without any pain. Stress tests for ligaments are performed between 10 and 30 degrees, as is the functional range of the knee joint. To assess cruciate ligaments, the Lachman test is performed. Stabilize the leg with one hand above the patella and the other hand on the proximal tibia. Alternatively, you can put your own thigh or knee under the patient's thigh and place your hand anteriorly to stabilize it. Translate the tibia anteriorly and posteriorly with your other hand. Excessive anterior or posterior displacement would be indicative of anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate ligament tears, respectively. Tibial step-off may be noted with the knee flexed at 90 degrees with posterior cruciate ligament tears. The jaw test may also be used to assess cruciate ligament tears. Collateral ligaments are assessed at both 0 and 30 degrees of flexion. If stress test is negative at 0 degrees and instability is only noted at 30 degrees, this is indicative of an isolated collateral tear. Instability at both 0 and 30 degrees is suggestive of a combined injury of the collateral and one or both of the cruciate ligaments. The McMurray test is positive if there is a click, crunch or pain but it's difficult to perform in the acute setting. Flex the knee and hip to 90 degrees and extend the knee in both internal and external rotation. The Steinmann test is performed with the knee hanging flexed at 90 degrees. A click, crunch or pain on sharp internal or external rotation is indicative of a municipal tear. This video is merely a guide to the clinical assessment of a patient with a knee complaint. Examination and further management should be tailored to each individual patient. We hope you have found this video useful. Thank you for watching.